Hey everyone, so what I wanted to do um, is to kind of show you guys my nightly routine, how I get my medications ready, start my pump, all of that, because um, for some of us it can be a lot, and so I just want to show you the, um, I guess, a, not tradition, but the way that we have started doing it to decrease the time because it used to take me about 45 minutes to an hour to finish my night medications and start my feed. So the first thing that we got is we got a bed table um, and that's where everything is going to go. Um, and I usually wipe it down with baby wipe so that I know it's clean. And the first few things to come out um, is my pulse ox. And blood pressure cuff. And my thermometer, because we check my vitals every night. Um, then I do all my liquid medications first, drawing them up in syringes. So, as I've mentioned before, each medication has its own syringe so that they don't mix by them, um, before getting into your body to be absorbed. Medication, Benadryl, and then this right here is an SSRI, an antidepressant medication that we're using to try and control some of my pain. Um, since it is um, an antidepressant medication, they do not want me pushing it through my J-tube because it would be absorbed way too fast. So I draw it up. And I bring out the extension that I hook up to my J-tube. And I kind of just prime it so that I get the least amount of air into my stomach as possible. So it'll come all the way to the top, and then I just clip it. And with that one, I'll go ahead and pour my water into my cup. I only flush 10 milliliters behind it because I'm already putting 20 of the medication and I can't handle much more. But what I'll do is I'll pull it up so that there's air here. That way I can completely push everything that's in the tube into, um, into the port so that I can close it and there won't be any remnants of medication or water in the tube. Another medication that I take is Tylenol. It's not time for your Tylenol. So that would be 30 milliliters. It's not cooperating with me today. For some reason, it is giving me a lot of air, so I'm going 
definitely, I'm not going to do my Tylenol right now. So now the next three medications I do are pills. And what I'm going to do is, one of them is Flexeril because I get muscle spasms in my stomach. And I've been getting those ever since my feeding tube was placed. So I take um, the Flexeril three times a day. So I'll go ahead and put it in here. Push it up really good. And make sure I get it all in the cup. and go ahead and dissolve it pretty well in water as good as possible that way you can avoid getting any clogs so that's mixed and what I'll do is in between each medication I'll add more water back into the cup just to make sure that I got all of the previous medication out of the cup. So that's one. Um, I am also on a cortical steroid, sorry, because I have adrenal insufficiency, so I have to take that nightly. So again, that pill becomes crushed. Pour it out. And again, mix very well so that it all dissolves. Um, I use room temperature water, but you can always use warm water from the tap um, to make it dissolve quicker. Okay, add that little extra bit of water. And then the third medication are actually capsules. So I don't need my pill cluster anymore. And I take four of these. It's an allergy medication so that I don't break out in hives. And all I do is just open up every capsule and make sure I get all the contents of the capsule out. out. Capsules can be thrown out, 
and it's actually quite a bit of medication in there, so it takes a little bit more water than the rest of them to actually get it to dissolve. Mixed in, and it's a really thick consistency for this medication. Um, so it takes, like I said, just a little more water to make sure that you get it all. So that would be my liquid medications, and I kind of just line them up so it's really easy for me to just um, push the medications through. I also clean my stoma every night. So with that, I have um, sterile cotton swabs, bacitracin or triple antibiotic ointment, a new tubi pad, saline water, and I also grab a couple of pieces of regular gauze. Another thing that I have to do is because I have not used my port today, I have to flush it and head lock it to avoid any clogs or any clots from forming. So I get those ready. This is just regular saline. And then this right here has um, Hepronized saline. And I'll grab a couple of alcohol swabs for that. And if I'm going to be running my fluids for the night, I will also, I would set those up. Um, I can also do IV Zofran um, on top of this. And so I would do the IV Zofran and I'd have to add another saline flush to make sure everything gets pushed out of the port and into my bloodstream. The next thing I do is I get my feed ready. So... Get the bag and go ahead and hang it. And I just straighten out the line when I pull it out just to make sure that it won't kink. One of my peptamins, and I'm going to be starting with clear settings. So we're going to go ahead and prime the pump. And as it's pumping, I'm going to squeeze out the air. And 
And as soon as it stops, which like I said previously, it usually stops about three quarters of the way. I have to manually hold down the pump button until it reaches the purple connector. And then from there, I'm going to hit done. I'll adjust my feed. My feed rate, I'm currently doing it at 30 milliliters an hour due to pain. And then I'll hit run and then hold it very quickly. And there's this resume in, in blank minutes. And I usually do resume in 30 minutes. That gives me time to do all my medications. And then it'll start on its own. So I would bring this over here. And one of the other things that I like to do is to prep the medications that I don't need right now, but will need possibly throughout the night. Um, so I take Dilaudid as breakthrough pain medication. And so I usually do one milliliter of that. And I've got the medication for my dystonic reactions also. And for right now, it's actually, I'm not due for my Benadryl or my methadone. Those are due around like 11.30. So this is just ready. That way, if I fall asleep, I can wake up and get them flushed in really quickly. I usually have Tylenol in this, but since I don't, I'm going to go ahead and draw the water so I can get my first flush in as soon as I'm done doing all the other ones. I grab a baby wipe, my chuck pad. and a piece of paper towel. And then I'll usually go ahead and sit down. And I kind of go from easiest to hardest, um, however that works for you. Um, so for me, that would be, first thing to do would be to flush my port. So you scrub really well. And flush that. And then another alcohol swab. And you do an alcohol swab between everything, between each flush, um, between if you do Zofran, you use, use an alcohol swab. Before you do that and you also do it before connecting to fluids to minimize the risk of infection. So I'll flush the heparin in and hep lock it. So that's it for tonight for that. The next thing that I do is clean my stoma. So I'll take my old tootie pad off. Grab one of the gauzes and wet it. so that I can wipe around my stoma. Take the other one and dry it. Put my new to be pad on. And 
use a sterile cotton swab to put around um, my stoma just because I have very sensitive skin. And that's it for the stoma care. The next thing that I do is I hook my um, extension into my G port. So that's right here. I open it up, just twist it in, and then I'll unclamp it so that I can push all the fluids in, all the medication. And I'll take my water. And go ahead and start pushing that in. And like I said, I leave the hair, the air behind it, so that it'll push the water out of my tube and actually go into my stomach, ensuring that I get all the medication. Then I can go ahead and take this off, because I will not need it again tonight. And then I can start pushing my medications. Um, I usually start with the pill medications so that something can come up behind it and push it out of the tube to make sure that there's no clog. So I'll shake it really well, unclamp it, and what I do is I like to push in a little bit and then shake it again in case it starts settling and just do that a couple of times do the next one What I'll do, what I'll do is grab my cup of water and make sure that it's clean and all the medication is out of the syringes. And then I'll go ahead and do my first flush of water. And I've said it a hundred times, and I'll say it a hundred more times. The more water you flush, the better. And drop this last bit. And then I'll go ahead and take my connector for my feeding tube and put that in. And make sure to unclamp it. And that'll actually start on its own in a few minutes. Um, next thing I'll do is I will take my blood pressure and also use my pulse ox and 
currently my heart rate is staying around 110 to 112 and that's kind of normal for me. Um, it's why I do the hydration therapy at home. And then, blood pressure is a little high for me for once. It's 132 over 77. So then that can be put away. And then I also check my temperature to make sure I don't have a fever. If I have a fever, I have to double up on my hydrocortisone. And my temperature is 98.2, so there's no fever. And the last thing to do is to get all of this just cleaned up, the trash thrown away, and allow my feet to start. It's still at 19 minutes, but sometimes the medication can overwhelm my body, and I'd rather let it use up those 30 minutes to give my body a break instead of overwhelming my body by starting my feet immediately. So these all get put away. These go in the sharps container. And one thing that I did forget is my Prilosec that I take nightly for reflex. Or for reflux, because Lately, I've been having a lot more of it, and that makes me more sick. So I take two of those at night. Once again, I will clean off my table. Away. Hold up the chuck because it can be reused. my nightly routine. Sometimes I have, an, I have other medications to add, sometimes I don't. Um, if I'm doing my port, um, instead of doing a heparin flush, I would just do a saline flush then hook up to my, um, my fluids. If I needed to do IV Zofran, I would have a second saline flush to push after the IV Zofran. It just depends on what's going on that night. But, um, we have found that this routine works a lot quicker for us um, and what I've been doing lately is starting about five o'clock I'll start getting my medications ready that way nine ten o'clock rolls around if I'm too tired everything is ready we just have to get it into me and then we can go to sleep. Um, if you guys have any questions let me know. Thank you.